Sounds delightful. <laughs> yeah. Sounds delightful. How was your day, Ryan? Uh, my day was pretty good. Great. Uh, it was a pretty quiet day at work, and I've just moved home. So, so yes. I'm just doing the stuff, yeah. Yeah, so you're there in your new home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Feeling yeah. settled yet? I have actually. It does feel yeah. like home, but uh, I still, I, I don't think I'll feel completely settled until I unpack everything. Sure, sure. So I keep telling myself this is the last uh, Pomodoro of unpacking to be done, but uh, it just keeps adding on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know Hofstadter's Law, no? Sorry? Oh, you know Hofstadter's Law? Starter's Law? Hofstadter's Law. No matter oh, how... Oh. No, no matter how long you plan on something taking, it takes even longer than <laughs> that. Even accounting for Hofstadter's law. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> well, certainly moving house. I uh, Last time me and my wife moved, uh, our landlord there told us, spread it over two days. He's a landlord, right? So he sees a lot of people coming and going. He says, yeah, everyone yeah. who tries to do it in one day just wrecks themselves. Well... We got to about 4 p.m. And we were thinking we could we could do this. Yeah. So we went ahead and, and then cut to around midnight. <laughs> and oh. We just flopped our mattress over on the floor, <laughs> collapsed on it. And we were thinking, yeah, we probably should have spread it over two days. <laughs> but hey, we got it done. I was able to drop the, the big rental van back early. Did you did you hire a removal firm or no 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 okay you got a large vehicle uh, no I I got a six person taxi oh great uh, yeah traveling light yeah, yeah yeah uh I thought I was traveling light now but it's still a lot of stuff but there's still half my stuff still in storage okay so okay I to well it's a lot of that too yeah maybe just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what what do they do if someone stops paying for the storage? Will they sell the stuff eventually? Uh, I have no idea. I have no idea. Interesting way to yeah. uh, interesting way to get rid of a load of stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. How about you, Eric? How was your day? Oh, it's been good. Um, I order a bunch of stuff uh, from stores online to start the seltzer business. Oh, say again, please. I ordered uh, a bunch of products online to start the seltzer business with a friend. The the 50% of what I'm hearing sounds very interesting, but it's <laughs> I don't know if it's my line or your line or the servers, but I'm getting a bit of a garbled. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, not quite uh, getting maybe the headphones. Um, can you hear me better now? Yeah, that does sound better. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to start a, a seltzer business with a friend. A seltzer business. And... Yeah. What's seltzer? Uh, it's the the latest uh beverage trend. It's um yeah. like a five percent. Oh, non-sugar thing, sparkling water. Great. Okay, so you're hopping on a trend. Yeah. Yeah. Since uh, I live, so okay, okay. I think it's good to start something like this. Sounds very exciting. And what are the ingredients in the seltzer? Sparkling water and. Um, it's uh, sugar water, which you ferment with yeast, and that creates the, the alcohol and also the, the bubbling. Interesting. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. So there's a yeah. demand for this already, and you're kind of hopping on, mm. yeah? but it sounds like you're in early. Don't you have it in the UK? Like a Truly or White Claw? Never heard of it. Mm. In the okay. U.S. is a big thing. Some people have already started trying to copy it here, mm -hmm. but they use like, uh, the artificially carbonated 
and just put some rum in it because we're a rum producing country. But I it see. tastes like uh, like rum, and but the other ones have a, a really mild. Yeah, but enough about that. <laughs> well, hey, sounds exciting, and best of luck. Uh, now, Ryan, you don't know too much about these calls. Uh, Eric Ryan found me on Reddit, and we had a wonderful conversation. Just, I think it was maybe a week ago now, Ryan. Correct. Yeah. 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 And Ryan had heard of Damarato as well, and so uh, I decided, well, we need to get Ryan in on these calls too. So, Eric, I think you've spoken with Damarato for some time. Is that right? Yeah. Twice. Fantastic. Great. I- on the on the Guru Viking podcast, and from then uh, I channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the the Guru Viking podcast is wonderful. I think Steve's doing some fantastic work bringing teachers together uh, to have those conversations. Yeah. Really important work. Mm-hmm. And so Ryan, we we've just set up these group calls, which happen okay. weekly. There's one for the US Sangha and one for the UK Sangha. And uh, we just come hang out because it's a great thing to hang out with other folks who are on the path. And uh, one of the things that we were talking about a lot last week, wasn't it, Eric, was it kind of normalizes being on the path day to day when we feel we can hang out with friends as well, as opposed to it being our dirty little secret. (laughs) And so, so that's what it is. So there's no agenda on these calls. We can just come together and hang out and talk shit and have a giggle. <laughs> I was wondering, Eric, if we could see more of your handsome face. Yeah. <laughs> what? I was, we are only able oh. to see. Oh, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like wonderful surroundings there as well, Eric. Oh, thanks. I'm seeing some bright sunshine coming through that arch there. Oh, yeah. Goodness, (laughs) where in the world is this? Nicaragua. Nicaragua. It's in... Yeah, North Brum, Costa Rica. Okay, okay. Uh, Were you inspired by the four-hour work week? Excuse me? Were you inspired by the four-hour work week? What about the work week? I'm sorry. The four-hour work week. It's a book by Tim Ferriss. By Tim Ferriss. I'm blessed because I I get to manage this big house and I just have to cook, clean, and I get my grub. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I was yeah. just wondering. Uh, I was just wondering if if you were inspired by the book, the Four Hour Work Week. Um, that book got inspired by me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good. Nice one. Nice one. Nice one. So you were there already, huh, Eric? That's what. Mm, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, we're, we're, we're chatting at yes, you and trying to eat your dinner. <laughs> from the Mantos, uh, this course is, he says, uh, you don't have to work any day in, in your life. You just have to enjoy it. And I was like, hey, I want some of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looks like a fantastic lifestyle. So, so is this a guest house? Mm-hmm. Mm. It used to be my house. Then in 2009, my parents made it into a hotel. They built upon it. And since uh, the pandemic, we had to shut down. And right. um, we rent rooms monthly. Okay. But it's a, it's a good arrangement mm. because we almost don't need to, like, um, it's less work. <laughs> and Sounds, you also get to, yeah. get to know better the people that live here. And it's like... Um, yeah, like a community. Right. So you're able to rent the rooms out as long as it's on at least a semi-permanent basis. Is that it? Yeah, we don't do contracts because it's like friends of friends. Cool. Um, what do you do? I teach drums by day. 
Oh, yeah, you were talking about it last thing. Yeah. Yeah, and occasionally I'll go and perform. That's my jam. Actually, Ryan, I've been curious about what you do for work. I'm a consultant psychiatrist. Ah, very interesting. Very interesting. So I just went to pick my wife up from her first job at a rehabilitation center where she's working closely with a psychiatrist. Okay, yeah. So similar worlds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whereabouts are you working? I'm working in uh, Ch -ch 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 uh, Cheltenham. Yes, I remember we said it was Cheltenham, right? Yeah. yeah. Are you are you doing private healthcare or are you with the NHS? I, I'm with the NHS. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But I'm working locum for the NHS. Okay. Okay. Locum. Locum. Remind locum me as in uh, as in freelance. Great. Okay. So do you get a bit more flexibility? A bit more flexibility and twice the pay. So I'm like, yeah, I, I don't mind that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me, brother. Sounds good to me. So I imagine you trained then. I imagine you went through some kind of medical school. Yeah, I went to, I went to medical school in India. Okay. And I did my... Uh, Yeah, in the UK. I was okay. in Manchester for a few years mm -hmm. and then I did some world traveling and traveling all over the place after that. Great. And then for the last five years, I was in London and the last mm -hmm. two years, I've been in Cheltenham. Great. A little bit slower pace of life than London, huh? It's amazing, man. I went yesterday to London. I couldn't get the fuck out of there quick enough. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I did six months and I was shocked it's quite extraordinary yeah 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 and and i was just like been there two maybe three times and every time i've been there i don't even want to stay overnight i just want to get in and get out as soon as possible yep. and i was a hardcore london person it oh yeah really grew on me i uh -huh. enjoyed it i loved the lifestyle i was really enjoying myself but yeah. once you go to a place that's more quiet, more laid back and more peaceful. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Well, especially as Dharma practice kind of ramps up some momentum, right? We tend to want a bit more space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, and, and also, it, 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 it's, it's, it's so much more headspace, so much more time, so much more peaceful. People are nicer, patients yeah. are nicer. Yeah. While yeah. London is just, yeah, it was, it got a bit too much. Yeah, I imagine the hospitals there are crazy. Yeah, right? yeah. So, mm. what part of India are you from, Ryan? South India, B um, Bangalore. Bangalore, okay. Yeah. My wife's from Kolkata. Okay, oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She came over here to study neuropsychology. Girls from Kolkata are hot, and they're pretty hot. They have that something she, to them. She's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. And uh, and and wonderful in all of the other ways as well. Yeah. I'm a very lucky boy. Uh, now I, she she came to study back in 2019. She'll hear me talking about her from the other room. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, She's not, she's not been able to visit home, of course. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, hey, Parker. Hey there, is my mic working? Yeah, it's working. How are you doing? Hey, Danny. I'm doing hey. well, how are you? Good, great, good to see you again. Yeah, you too. This is my friend Ryan. Ryan, meet Parker. Hi, Parker. Hey, Ryan. Hey, hey how are you doing? Good, nice to meet you. Nice to meet we're you just, too, right? We're just, uh, we're just talking about India. Ryan grew up in Bangalore, and I think you've met Debbie, haven't you, Parker, my wife? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So she grew up in Kolkata, and we're just talking about how she's not been home since arriving in the UK. And I've probably mentioned before how I've yet to meet my in-laws, which is an interesting arrangement. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the, the, the most intimate interaction I've had with my in-laws is what we're doing right now. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. How's your week been? 
Um, it's been really good. Good. Great. Tell us more. Um, let's see. Um, in terms of hmm, the practice, um, one thought I had is, um, or one thing I've been, um, my mind has been thinking about is, um, and we kind of talked about this uh, last call too, is the difference mm. between um, like some of the precepts and even some of Dom Rado's teaching. Um, they were at first adopted as um, like rites, rules, and rituals um, in terms of like I should be doing this. There's not a example coming to mind. Or like um, lying and stealing is... Um, or like lying and harsh speech, that's mm. been um, an interesting um, thing in terms of uh, s- some people, like parents, um, they grow up in like a one up, one down position with you. Mm-hmm. Um, so being able to share things with them without um, coming off as like oh like still maintaining that one up one down position because that's kind of the format they're in but i mm. guess i originally posed this um in like the way of precepts and not and this has been i've been getting a lot better at this but originally um and this what was one of the first talks i had with Domrado. Um, mm. There's kind of this idea in the West that you have to be telling the truth no matter what. Um, <laughs> and yet so few do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you, you, you can't lie. And I'm sure that has like Christian basis yeah. Um, yeah. in the culture. Because the but... big guy's watching. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but um, not lying um, gets you in some... Uh, drama or trouble if you um just say things um without any regard to other people's feelings um or worldviews so um and i think this is where the idea of harsh speech comes in where um you um harsh speech and friendship uh where you prioritize friendship over the truth yeah. When speaking there, to someone. There's also a balance in that. Uh, because yes. if you like assume that you're interpreting other other people's feelings or positions, then you may uh, you may be acting condescendingly, unknowingly. Like uh, you, you, you could be. Like if you're in a position of power and you in simple terms, oh this person is weaker than me, I'll be considerate. And some people might find that, uh, oh, hey, why, why is he not treating me with the respect? Why don't I deserve his honesty? What do you think about that, Dan? Is it mm-hmm. friendship or the truth? Oh, lots of identities present in, in the little picture that you just painted there, Eric, right? You can hear that. You can hear how many selves are going on if we're in that mode, <laughs> right? Loads yeah. of identity. We're, we're creating a strong identity for ourselves and for the other person. And then there's all of this interplay going on between the two. And it's, it's probably all uh, shifting rapidly. There's a lot of skill that can be applied in my experience. And, and Parker, I want to make sure that you felt done. Oh, yeah, you can this. go ahead. Did? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If we go ahead and start dropping truth bombs on people, they're likely <laughs> to just run in the opposite direction. Uh, have you guys seen the wonderful mural on the side of the spiritual library at Watsu Unmok? Mm-hmm. Ah, there's this incredible mural on the side of this large building that features a large seated figure handing out eyes. And this figure represents the teacher. 
the eyes, of course, are the Dharma. In the top right of this mural, the crowd is seen running in the opposite direction. One person is seen kneeling, taking an eye. Another is seen fitting the eye onto his head, but facing in the opposite direction. And this represents confusion. The confusion that comes with seeing things differently. And there's one more figure down in the bottom who has the eye fitted and he's facing the teacher in gratitude. And so the teacher here is shown handing out eyes, but not throwing them at people. It's important. Yeah. So we hand them out. Uh, you know, we don't. <laughs> well, I suppose occasionally we might go on a bit of a crusade on Reddit, <laughs> but we don't spend a lot of time trying to interrupt people's day with the Dharma. And those crusades actually <laughs> are taking place on Dharma subreddits. Uh, so uh, we're we're. Um, we're choosing our battleground, so to speak. I think I think that Mohammed, it's it's a matter of skill. It's in a conversation with someone where you see an opportunity to share some truth. I think we have to ask ourselves what's most useful, what's most beneficial here. Hey, Mohammed, good to see you. What's most useful here? What's most? Oh, your mic's off, Mohammed. Okay. I, hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hey. hey. I thought it was getting interesting a little bit. So. Yeah. 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 It sure is. This is a really interesting topic. Yeah. Um, did you have something to say? Yeah. I, I just want to talk about the sutta when the Buddha uh, was asked by a warrior, a professional warrior, uh, what happens, you know, for, for a warrior, and he didn't answer the first time and the second time. Only when he was asked the third time, he answered. And he told him that, I mean, the answer was unpleasant. And, you know, the truth was, you know, mm -hmm. this this is his profession. That's why I didn't talk about it. But he didn't lie also. This is very right. Uh, right. important. We should not lie. I'm also right or him, okay, white lie or whatever. It will make him feel good, but it's still lies. It's still not the truth. Yeah, and there are... Uh some really interesting ways that you can avoid telling the truth whilst avoiding telling a lie. So you can get very skillful with your speech, right? Parker's nodding along. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie's laughing. <laughs> We've all done it, right? Where we're, we're not dropping the truth bomb and we're not lying either. Deb's done 12 hours of it today. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, the thing about the truth, it, it's, it, it really doesn't hurt. We, well, when we face it, uh, it can hurt, but if it hurts, there is judgment. There is a mind that judges things in terms of good and bad. There is a, there is a mind that doesn't like the truth. That's why it gets hurt, it gets offended. But the, but the truth in itself, it's not good, it's not bad, it's just the truth. Right. I think we should stick to it no matter what. I, I mean, at, at least for me, I just want to stick to the truth. This is very big rule for me. This. It keeps me on the path. If I, if I don't, don't keep on the truth, I feel like I'm lost. It's an admirable position. Um, and, and no doubt, well, no doubt, um, it's likely, we'll say, um, that you'll run into some challenging situations. If your practice is, I'm going to drop those truth bombs. I don't yeah. care who's coming at me. I don't care <laughs> whether they're ready for it. I don't care if they want to hear it. They're getting the truth. And, and here's the deal, right, is, is you're probably aware, Mohammed. even if they get upset in the moment, they might thank you in 20 years' time. Mm -hmm. At least I, I didn't lie. Yeah. I could, 
take, and, confuse them and make, take advantage of it, but I, right. I did not. And, and great. It's a noble uh, thing to do. Yeah, great, great for you to, to your position, right? Is you want to tell the truth and that's your practice and that keeps you on the path. Right. Yes, Eric. But I think there's more to disentangle there because, I mean, there is a lot of truth in the world. Let's say, for example, that I'm talking to you and we have a disagreement. Mm. And it's true that I'm sitting and that I'm breathing, but I'm not going to suddenly say, I'm sitting, I'm breathing, this is the floor, uh, we are in this country, and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, to me, it's important that we ask ourselves, why do I feel that I need to share this particular thing? And why is this important to me? And mm -hmm. uh, we have, it could be important for my personal process or for the other person's process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if we don't like ask ourselves that, we may be falling into uh, like impulsiveness. Mm. And, and also, my po I, I've got this thing about unsolicited advice. Mm. Is if someone asks for advice, then fair enough. And even if they ask for advice, it should be done with a measure of kindness. And but also, it, it it makes no sense just because someone's fat. I can't tell them, listen, you're you, you're a huge lump of lard, and you're going to get cardiovascular <laughs> disease. And I'm here. I'm saving your life. You need to lose a hundred pounds. Or even if it's even if they're asking for advice, all I have to do is do it with kindness. Mm. I can't say you have no social skills and you say this thing, you blood stuff out without thinking just because you want to be honest and blah blah blah. No, it's just yeah. That's that's an interesting example you to use the physical plane, right? We we all know that someone who's dangerously overweight is in trouble. And yet to accost this person and tell them all about it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just gonna it upset. Comes to right speech. This thing comes to right speech. That, uh, right, that comes I mean, right speech. why will you talk about that? Is it yeah. beneficial or not? And yes. it's not about truth. Act really, it's more about speech. Right. So, so right. So we could talk about right speech as the uh, compass. Here, right, and right speech would include kindness. So the content and the presentation both. Content and presentation both. How do you mean? So you may choose to tell the truth to someone, but it has to be based on a decision on whether that truth is going to do more harm than good. First and second, how you present it, right? So you can be really compassionate, like many of you mentioned, be compassionate about it or be really rude to them. And that, again, comes down to the cost benefit analysis. If you are really rude, you can get potentially get them depressed. And the person who's already overweight can go back binge eating because you got them depressed. So you have to be really kind. And sometimes ignorance is bliss. We can't ignore that as well. So the better you are making, uh, you, the better you are at making that decision, the better you're going to be, uh, the more helpful you're going to be to yourself and others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yes. Think? Yeah. So it's skillful means all the way and what wonderful practice for us all yeah. to be skillful. And uh, yeah, I've also learned about because it takes the extra effort because I can just blurt something out. But, yeah. if, but if I but if I take the extra effort and present it, I can say almost anything to anybody, and they will take it in, in, in a healthy way. I right. do agree. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Well, Hopefully. there's always that point one percent of randomness, right? Where the person mm. can misinterpret you, maybe due yeah. to various reasons. They can be irritable or whatever. Uh, but we can always make sure that we are. 99% sure that it's not going to do harm. We can do our best. Hey, Jeff. Hi, how are you? Hey, Jeff. Great. Good to see you again, brother. Good okay. seeing you, brother. Welcome back. Welcome Hello. back. Mother across the sea. Yes, that's <laughs> right. Yes. Still here. 
still here. So we're talking about uh, being skillful in situations in which you can see that someone might benefit from some truth. Right. And then balancing that with right speech. And uh, net benefiting everyone. We hope. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, Jeff, you've you've not met Ryan before. Ryan and I met on Reddit, and so I promptly invited him to join our wonderful little sangha. Hi Ryan, nice meeting you. Hi Jeff, I I, I love your eyes and your nose. Oh, see is my eyes and nose. <laughs> Even better, much better, yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, Debbie. Sure the fellow in the corner there, with the, the, uh, uh, the bottom uh, left hand corner, at least on my screen. Oh, I think we're probably all in different corners for one another. We are. Yeah. That's how it tends to go. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, hello. Hello everyone. So, so Jeff, you wouldn't. I don't think you saw Mohammed's face last week, but he was joining us on the audio conversation. Ah, very good. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I remember. Oh, okay. Hi, Mohammed. How are you? Doing good. Hope you're doing good. Too. So Debbie is fresh from her first real shift at her new job. She's been doing training for just over a week, and then today she did. 12 hour shift. Yeah. And she's <laughs> still here joining in. Yeah. I could actually benefit from a refreshing course on Dharma. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like my anxiety spikes and my arousal level is at peak. Oh, so wow. I, I can use Dharma to calm down. So okay. thank you, guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why we're here. Yeah. That's why we're here. Thank you all. It's really nice to meet you. I'm seeing so many of you for the first time. Majority. I think I only met Parker in our last call. Uh, last Jeff, July. Jeff, Jeff was here last week. Oh, I see. Okay. Eric was Eric and Mohammed both, I think, were listening in okay. last week. Ah. Maybe joining in a little. Great to have you guys. Thanks. <laughs> you, you're enjoying the Dharma talk so far? Sure. Yeah, good. Uh, Ryan is from Bangalore. Are you? I am, yeah. I, I'm uh, from yeah. Kolkata. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, I was, yeah, I was speaking uh, to Dan and I was telling him that girls from Calcutta are hot. And he's saying, yeah, <laughs> my wife is hot. <laughs> 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 I, I I I went to Calcutta when I was seventeen or eighteen. Really? Okay. And and I saw the girls; they were drop dead gorgeous, and they look me right in the eye, <laughs> and they'd say, "Hey, big boy, do you have what it takes?" Oh. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> it's the bong effect. Yeah. <laughs> Unintended. <laughs> 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 so yes, uh, folks from uh, folks from West Bengal, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Are colloquially known as Bong. So Bengalis, yeah, Bong. Bengalis. A bong. bong. And all of my favourite dishes that Debbie cooks are Bong dishes. Yay! So uh, I'm very, very much anticipating <laughs> a visit. Okay, let's get back to uh, Dharma talk. Hey, Indian food is Dharma. <laughs> <laughs> food can be therapeutic, isn't it? Absolutely. Do you guys have your comfort food? Something that you feel like calms you down, makes you feel good? Anyone? I've, 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 learned, I've learned that it's, 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 it's not healthy. Uh, because sometimes we can get, uh, this is what I realize is that I can get into spirals. I can avoid doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I can get into comfort food. The comfort food makes me feel worse. And that goes around in a spiral. When actually mm -hmm. it's much better to, to eat clean, eat healthy, exercise or meditate and have that baseline foundation. So 
I can function at my best instead of feeling groggy and drowsy and anxious and stressed because of junk food. Which yeah. tastes amazing though, which tastes amazing. Right. That's <laughs> so weird. Every tasty dish is unbelievably healthy, unhealthy, which is such a... <laughs> every, <laughs> almost. Every. There is, I think there is a correlation between... Yeah. Right. Ooh, look um, at you being all sciencey, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I used the word correlation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My neuros... <laughs> Wife is impressed. <laughs> can you spell it? <laughs> What's that, Jeff? Could I spell it? Spell it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe tomorrow morning. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can spell it either, actually. Yeah. And I have a degree, so. Yeah, no, I got. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right with spellings. I, I, I generally did okay with language in school. I, I took to that. <laughs> naturally so yeah, I think if I if I tried really hard I might be able to spell correlation <laughs> <laughs> Ryan is a consultant psychiatrist really yeah. oh wow that's so cool yeah. amazing so yeah psychiatrist and psychologist um, work really well together mm -hmm. Because what we lack is that rigorous training in medicine, right? And we train like loads and loads in psychology. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when we work together, the you service users, covered. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's what NHS is trying to do, get that multidisciplinary team going. Isn't it, Ryan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes you get married to psychologists. I mean, I'm talking about me. My my ex-wife was a psychologist. Uh, my ex-girlfriend was a psychologist. Uh, <laughs> and then you're socializing for each other, right? Uh, not really. No, no. I, 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 I don't think, you, you know, once you're in a relationship, you, you don't psychoanalyze each other. No, I mean, work yeah. is work. And yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's all about balance, whether work-life balance or balancing your diet and working, right effort. It's all about balance, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Balance. Yeah, I like balance. I've, 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 I've got this, this theory that is, that's the OMG sweet spot. It's okay. the sweet spot. It's the sweet spot between moderation and guilt. Ah, uh, yeah, right. And, and not doing too much that it becomes complete overwhelm. Mm -hmm. So, so that's that's the thing between overwhelm, moderation, and guilt. That is a good one. Yeah, yeah. If you, if we can be in our, you know, attempt to put the right effort, we can almost go way towards. You know, too much towards the other extreme and we are like yeah. almost pushing ourselves to be yeah be happy which doesn't work yeah. well so, there's a very famous sutta about this really tell us yeah yeah Mohammed, are you familiar with this one you have to tell no, it i'm following you with yeah you, you are you can can you guess what sutta i'm about to quote from uh, yeah it's a great teaching on on right effort. There's a, a monk who's practicing walking meditation. I feel like I've told this story very recently. I don't know if it was on our call last week, but there's a stop me, guys, if you've heard this story <laughs> in the past seven days. Uh, there's a monk who's practicing walking meditation. And the soles of his feet are bleeding. OK. You know the one, Mohammed. Yeah. I know. And uh, Parker's smiling. Yeah. I think you talked about this on our very first call. Oh, I did. Okay, so 14 days ago. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll finish uh, off. It's good. I mean, it's good to, to talk yeah, about go it ahead. again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah. So one of the other monks goes and tells the Buddha and says, this guy's overdoing it. The Buddha comes along and says to the monk who's, who's injured, you used to play the veena. Did you not? And the vena is a, like a ringed instrument, right? And the Buddha says to the monk, 
when the strings of your vena were too loose, was your instrument in tune and playable? The monk said, nope. The Buddha said, when the strings of your vena were too tight, was your instrument in tune and playable? The monk said, nope. The Buddha said, when the strings of your vena were not too loose and not too tight, but just right, was the instrument in tune and playable? And the monk said, yup. <laughs> and that's right effort. Yeah. Now, there's investigation for us to do to find out what that right tuning is, which is exactly what you're describing, Ryan, right? Yeah. You've experimented long and you've found there's this sweet spot. Yeah. yeah. And it's going to be different. No, for I'm... Everybody. Go on. Yeah. No, I've experimented long. I still haven't found the sweet spot. <laughs> 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 you're closer now than you were before. No, no, I know exactly what it is, but I haven't found it or taken. You know what it is. I think that's know. what we know in life. No, we know exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think that I, I think that the answers are always clear. No, so with the, at least almost always clear. So at least with most of these things, we know what the answer is. With whatever we do with sugar, with unsolicited advice, with honesty and all that. It's just, it's up to us to take it. Uh, I think, I think I get what you're saying. Um, I agree that it's easy to conceptually understand and, you know, have an idea, conceptually grasp it, but to imbibe it in your reality and kind of integrate into your being is difficult. And then if we, even yeah, if yeah. we achieve it, then the question becomes, are we going to be able to maintain it? And that's where present focused uh, meditation or bringing our attention back to the present moment is so important because you don't have to maintain. It's mm -hmm. only about just now, mm -hmm. which helps, mm -hmm. right? Because it takes that anxiety away from, oh my God, I have to keep doing this over and over again. Otherwise, yeah. you're a bad boy or a girl. Yeah. Right? Only have to do it once. Yeah. And and as we become more skillful, there's less and less doing anyway. Yeah. Because that becomes automatic. Yeah. Damarato. Yeah, less forceful. I mean, mm -hmm. the less doing forceful. is still there, uh, but it's like the mind likes it and it's doing it by itself. You're not like forcing it into doing it. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. Damarato talks wonderfully about uh, practice, performance and play. He says that the, the learning musician, first of all, practices, 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 practices. And this is a very regimented, a very kind of deliberate process, usually involving distraction free time. And then that musician reaches a level of proficiency where they're ready to go out and perform. And now there might be some distractions in the environment, but they've reached a level of proficiency where they can still do what they got to do. Mm. And then the final level is play. And Damarato used Louis Armstrong as the example, who was just at play. He, he wasn't really performing. He was playing. He was joyful. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Comes to the level where it's easy. And then there's that, that, that right effort appears to be self-sustaining or perhaps it's that uh the correct frequency is what's natural and that our slackness or our looseness mm -hmm. is what's unusual yeah mm. it's similar to what ryan said it's like your baseline changes mm. so what used to be effortful now becomes your baseline Right, especially if and when you gather evidence that actually things are good. Right, yeah. When you're at that correct frequency. Yeah. Mm. I, I'm a big fan of the Chinese principle called Wu Wei. Mm. Ah, tell mm -hmm. us about it. Which is Wu is known without negative 
and we is action and doing. So it's effortless action. But a different translation is non-forcing. So it's when you completely let go of trying and when you don't try to do anything, but nothing is left undone. Right. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ajahn Chah is from the Tibetan forest monk tradition. He used the term, I thought it was a beautiful term, still run water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Not the Tibetan. Yeah, Thai. Thai. Thai, yeah. Yeah. Ajahn Chah. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, lovely. And Damarato expresses it as uh, nowhere to go and nothing to do. Spring comes and the grass grows by itself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I asked Damarato about it and he, like, about the translation, he said it's action without action. It's a little bit interesting. It's like doing without making karma. Like without entangling the mind in, in the world. Like the mind is acting, but it's free from the world. And it's, it's actually difficult to achieve. I mean, we talk about it as something very simple, but it's, if we dig up into our intentions, it's not so easy. To, I mean, we, we can get close, but to really do it, to do action without action, it's quite difficult. Actually. We can get close, but still. Not quite well, th- th- you, you, you're describing the the quandary that so many of us begin our practice in isn't it muhammad is is uh how do i relax (laughs) how do i relax the paradox being that relaxing isn't a doing yeah it's undoing (laughs) right (laughs) Mm -hmm. like trying to sleep trying to sleep right yeah, has that ever worked for anyone? No. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Cool. yeah, and and we're we're so conditioned to doing, to trying, to action that we end up completely lost, feeling yeah, that it's so entangling. It's, it's so stressed. I like, want yeah. to do it. I'm trying to do it. Yeah, and and so of course, hey, uh, I've got a problem which is that I'm doing too much. <laughs> Tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah. Like adding lax to your to-do list, eh? <laughs> say, say again, Jeff. Adding relax to the bottom of your to-do list. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. I scheduled time to relax yeah. on my little to-do app yeah you've done that ryan yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> something similar is i did relax now i need to be uh, calm and happy i i did relax right, i right. did the doing so i need to be happy or i took a breath now i need to be happy but people uh-huh. forget it's not that it's not a you do now and you get the reward le- later uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's that process mm-hmm. focus, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I, I I think what I'm now realizing is peace is is the goal. The peace has to be as a baseline, and play also has to be a baseline. So even all these th- and relaxation. So all these things that I want to do should have play as an element in it. The only things, two things that don't have play and that require forcing in my life might be this one high priority project that I need to complete, which I thought just do one higher priority project for three months at a time and exercise because exercise sometimes you need to force yourself to do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the exercise is important for everything else to run like clockwork. Mm. Mm. You could say the, the goal is to stop setting any goals. Mm. That would well, be and, yes. and, it, and in, right. indeed, isn't it, isn't it interesting when we start to consider what, what happens when I stop setting goals? How many can get lost? It, it, Sorry, Mohammed? Uh, I mean, I, I mean you, you asked what can happen. I told you, you, you can get lost when you stop setting goals. You can Possibly. get lost. Well, um, lost in what way? And your desires, the deformance of the mind, they push you everywhere and you, you don't have a goal, you don't have 
roadmap and you're lost. Well, the, you the goal is to stop setting goals, so you have yeah. that roadmap. <laughs> well, you, you follow your desires and so that's it. I, you're lost. I mean, you don't have a goal, but you're wandering around without a goal. It's the same, isn't it? Well, we're in some interesting territory dullness. now. Go ahead, Eric. You can fall in dullness. You could. Mm -hmm. I uh, well, I finished uh, my bachelor's bachelor's in 2016, mm -hmm. and I was telling some of you guys earlier that I live in a house in which I, I rent rooms. So I have, I mean, but I, I've been working uh, for two years, but before that I, I was pretty much in permanent vacation because I, I wanted to give myself some time without setting goals. Mm. Uh, and it's part of a process because on one hand, uh, it's just that you're left to your own devices and you cannot blame anyone for your failures or anything. Uh, and it's on one hand a clearer perspective but i also agree with mohammed because um if you're not disciplined enough uh you can develop unhealthy habits for example uh, regarding laziness or i mean i know that uh it's my my um, capitalist mind <laughs> speaking right now but it does have its unhealthy side in which you indulge too much in in your um immediate possibilities, let's say. Um, for example, junk food or watching too many series and stuff. And I felt the difference on my baseline when I'm when I let go. Uh, and I uh, and I'm not like disciplined or healthy and it's just bad vibrations in the body. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not like yeah. being damned, but it's just a, a heavy feeling. And now I'm, I was uh, on a laziness streak for, for a week now, and I've been doing like yoga and meditating and yeah, my healthy stuff for three days and I already feel like uh, top notch. It's better. Yeah, that, it's better. I mean, it's really simple. If, if we say, I don't have a goal, it's very simple. Just ask yourself, what is there? What is present? I mean, ask your mind, ask yourself, what, what is there? Okay, I don't have a goal. What's in my mind? And you will see all these defilements, all the laziness, all the bad habits. They're still there. I, you did not get rid of them. And you don't have like anything like to keep you moving to, to remove them. And the goal is really simple. Just remove the defilements, really. It's not like a big goal in itself. It's a practice. Um, Go ahead, then. Do you want to say something? So, yeah. So, I think we, we're may be engaged in a little bit of semantics around the word goal. I think that, Mohammed, you're using the word goal to mean practice-oriented goals. Right? Yeah. If we can call Sati a goal, then sure. The kind of goals that rely upon the future yeah, that's the wrong. worth making a distinction about. Yeah. Right. If I, then I will. Can I add to that? Sure. I think we, when we talk about goals, I think we need to keep in mind two things. First is there is a relational being. You have to live in a world. We, you have to earn money. You have to do the needful. So in that sense, it may be useful to set some goals. But we also have to keep in mind um, that we take everything lightly, which is like if we focus unnecessarily on the goal and we kind of be the critical parent where we are obsessing about the goal and we are kind of criticizing, shaming, blaming ourselves if we cannot achieve it to our expectation, then it can be harmful. But again, it comes down to moderation. So momentarily, it may seem no goal is suitable for a person who is being uh, really tough on themselves. Mm -hmm. But like Eric said, after a period of time, setting some goals can be useful to you. If you want to achieve something, yeah, 
you're probably going to need a goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what we're interested in is practice is, of course, dissolving or becoming free from that which would take us toward instant gratification in the first place, or would take us toward unhealthy, so unwholesome. So you're talking that about that going on and keeps on repeating. Yeah. Oh, I <laughs> heard I heard two two comments at once. Go ahead, Debbie. Uh, I said, are you talking about the preliminary practices then? I wasn't thinking about preliminary practices. Like uh, getting your mind fit to work, whereas, you know, kind of getting yourself into a position where you can proceed towards um, a higher level of spiritual attainment, like no goal. A person who's like, you know, massively unhealthy and doesn't have the right views on point mm -hmm. is not likely going to benefit from no goal and all of that because at that point for that person the goal is to learn the right views do you know what i mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once he, he's got that he can proceed towards a more sophisticated goal which may be no goal <laughs> am i making sense you are to me at least <laughs> Is everyone following? Yeah, yeah. The second part, I didn't really get it. The second part. Oh, OK. Mm. Could you present it a bit better? I, I don't think so, no. I, th I think that that person who needs to hear those right views might, for example, get a hold of Damarato and be able to hear pretty early on that we want to come out of goal orientation. Right. No, but... See, you you talk about you're talk, now talking about goal orientation. Right. That's a different thing from goals. So right. So we're kind of in semantics again. Yeah. So it's worth untangling. Yeah. This stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Where we could bring another word in attachment. Mm hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, where it's that if we're attached to goals. Mm hmm as you said, beating ourselves up if we don't do X, Y, or Z, yeah. then we're in trouble. But indeed, then another way of looking at goals is get a glass of water, you've got a goal. Right, yeah, and that's the relational being, right? The mm -hmm. physical, the, the one that keeps us alive. Mm -hmm. If you want to make a Dharma call, you've got a goal. Yeah. You could look at this as the difference between wisdom and fear. Um, ah. And your, you can set up your situation, you can set up your environment in a wise way where you have a meal every day. Um, so you don't have that thought of, or so you free yourself from that position of um, wanting to eat. And it's just kind of mm. there for you. Um, right. In the same sense, you can um, orient yourselves or put yourself in a situation where you're hanging out with people in the Dhamma or um, noble people, um, so you don't have to um, fear um, the dangers that uh, might, uh, say, come from acquainting yourself with people at the bar. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is similar to what I was trying to get at. You mm. you put it nicely. Thank mm. you, Parker. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Good. Mohammed, you had a comment a little while back. Is it still around? Uh, about goals? Uh, no, but I, I, well, I have a comment right now. I, I think it's mm. good to remind ourselves that the practice, the goal of the practice really is the end. There is no goal after it, so it's, it's really... Uh, the end. Uh, other paths, they lead to something else. They lead to the next. They lead to something more. They, they're entangled in time. There's always something in the future. But the practice, it's, it gives it an end. It stops. The mind stops creating these things. It stops creating uh, suffering. And it's, it's, a goal, it's a good goal. I mean, it's, it's not uh, like something that, that's going to entangle us. It's liberating. The goal is to be free. And once you're free, you don't need the goal anymore. You just, okay, I'm free. I've done it. Yes. Even there, we have to be kind of careful that when we're sat in meditation, we're not 
craving something. I have the goal of being free. Yeah. Let me get free. Let me get free. Right. Yeah, uh, like uh, as you said uh, before, like uh, the goal of the practice. Okay, I'm going to establish my mindfulness right now. I'm going to be yeah. present. I'm going to get rid of the defilement. You know, it's a small goal. It, uh, I mean, you do it uh, momentarily. As you said, it's just the practice. That's what we yeah. could call a wholesome goal. Yeah. So, uh, a way to put it without uh, referencing goals is like, uh, for example, right now I have, I can identify a place within me that has the state of mind that I'm trying to maintain. And like, uh, like if the mind were always feeding on something with the attention, I just, I'm just preparing or choosing to feed off of this, which is uh, noble, healthy, and will keep me in a, in a good state of mind. Mm. Yeah, mm. so that's your goal. And so we're talking about the karma that ends karma. Mm. Yeah. The, or the doing that ends doing, the action that ends action. Now, I, I think I think it's really hard to get outside this mindset of goals because even the goal of no goal, you're you're aiming for a goal of no goal, and it's like you were saying, it's that, that it's that, that the standard of goals keeps increasing, and uh, so we're always and even after we reach the end goal, there'll always be something. I need to stay on the eightfold path. I need to be kind. I need to be compassionate. And when you're there, you don't need it. it. That's it. When, when you're there, you, you really don't need it. You say, okay, I'm here. You don't need it. You don't, okay, I, I need something next. Like the whole like thing, thinking is backwards. When you're free, you don't need something more. I mean, you, you want... I, I think, I think that's, that's the point I'm trying to move towards is, is that need point. I think the goals are good, but the goals should come not from a place of grasping. But yeah. from a place of freedom, it's that, that's the flow. So the word there, would be attachment, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. There may be games to be played or um, toys to be played with rather than things to be acquired or um, yeah. things to yeah, achieve. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. It makes a point. So, 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 so the insight that, that I'm getting now is I need actually need now, I need to put the work in. I need to put the practice in so I can perform so later I can play and the play is the freedom. But right now I need to, to do the meditation to, but we to, were speaking, to be at peace. Yeah. But we were speaking, weren't we, about making your practice the practice of enjoying this. Yeah. Right? It's the that's, practice that's the of absolute play. best way to get there. That's the absolute yeah. best way to get there. Yeah. Yeah, and where so everything is the, free, where everything. the the practice becomes the completion of the goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's uh, the the sutta where uh, I I don't I don't know if it's the sutta, but the Buddha he asked people what is right mindfulness. I mean, how 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 many times do you reflect on death? One person says said I, I reflect on death once a day. Another one said that twice a day. And there's uh, another one who said I reflect on it. Each breath, I mm -hmm. and the Buddha said, "What did he say?" <laughs> Muhammad's keeping us waiting for the punchline. <laughs> we lost you, Muhammad. Yeah, but I, I, I think you, you got like the point. Yeah. No, we didn't get the point. We didn't get it. <laughs> Like you establish your mindfulness at every moment and that's it. That's all you have to do. Just pay attention and that's it. The, the punchline the punch Ryan is that the Buddha said that the monk who was concerned or, or interested <laughs> in every breath was the monk that had right attitude. Just this present moment, just this present moment. Just don't make a goal in the future. I'm going to do right now meditation and in the future. I'm going to have, no, it's, it's not like that. Just in this present moment, investigate your mind in this present moment. What, what are you doing? Because the mind is always constantly making a lot of things. You don't see them. Uh, it need, needs investigation, needs mindfulness, needs concentration. Just make the, just see in the present moment. Dig it. See inside yeah. it. I, it. I, like, small... I like the word seeing because 
sometimes when he, when we think we are going to meditate now for being better in the future, uh, we can get we can blindsight ourselves. But clear seeing would be, oh, wait, I'm thinking about the future and then redirecting ourselves into, hey, I am wise, happy, healthy right now. So let's celebrate. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff, you had a comment. I think Mohammed had made a, a, a good point, a good distinction in that. And that goals may be necessary, especially in the worldly world. But that once you embody something, you don't need the goal anymore because you've, I mean, you've attained it. It's just, it's just there. It's in you. And so yeah. this, this goal setting mechanism can be turned off. Yeah. To, to actually, that, that's, that's the correct way to think about it is that something has ceased rather than that we've gained something, we've lost something. Yeah. yeah, or something has ceased is is the most accurate way to put it. Uh, a mental process seeking. with which we were so familiar, seeking, craving, clinging, has ceased. Mm -hmm. But they they also mentioned something about when you attain it, you have to maintain it. Yeah. And I think a dangerous thing about thinking that I made it is that I've seen cases of many spiritual masters, not in the necessarily in the Buddhist tradition, that start up uh, like having good values and benefiting their community, and then they uh, like they believe everything their followers say to them, and they inflate their ego and have mm -hmm. disastrous lives because mm -hmm. they don't. Uh, they how is this possible? How can I be doing something better if I've already attained it? That's where clear seeing comes in. And, and definitely, I think Damrato is very keen on this, which is repetition. So, you know, somebody who's very enlightened can also benefit from a Dharma talk, from a refresher course. You know, it's almost like telling you, remind you your brain of all the right attitudes, the right uh, speech and everything, so that that ego state doesn't kick in and you are on your path but it's a very playful way to be there right you you're not putting as much anymore you're just playing with your um pre present success you know well parker was talking earlier weren't you about um just arranging things such that you hang out with the sangha yeah you have your your food is taken care of those four requisites that the buddha spoke about they're all taken care of because buddha dasa added in time structuring mm, okay to those four requisites so that yeah you're you're ticking along mm. so to speak without without any need to consider the question am i on the path right so your your goal is so yeah in that sense you don't have a goal of maintaining that state you just maintain and that's the well, playful well, quality. Uh, yeah, and you know, we can always kind of drop the no self card, but mm, yeah. right at some point, there's there's no you around to maintain anything anyway. Yeah. Right. Always, yeah. It's like floating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Those skills, right? <laughs> Yeah, so, so so then again, you know, we had that image earlier, didn't we, of, of practice, performance, play. Mm -hmm. It's playing. Yeah. It's playing. <laughs> <laughs> How to uh, like it? It's just useful to have a goal. I think uh, the ultimate goal of everyone is to be happy, right? And who, want, who doesn't want to be happy? I mean, even people yeah. who, do, who don't, don't want to be happy, they see their happiness and not being happy, right? Yes. Uh, well, well, yeah, that's, also is the true happiness to be that's, truly happy? Yeah, that's a nice place to substitute in the word satisfaction. Right, because then we can take the image of the evil dictator doing all these terrible things and you can say, well, happiness isn't really so much on that guy's agenda. It sounds like smiley, <laughs> smiley, right? <laughs> but they're definitely seeking satisfaction. 
uh, I think satisfaction is a more sophisticated word. We can say pleasure. So pleasure, pleasure. yeah. It's the, the thing that you said is almost yeah. similar as good, taking drugs. I don't know, right? Because, well, I, I think we're in semantics well, again. You think? Well, if, if we talk about pleasure, there are people, uh, they hurt themselves, you know, self-mutilating. They want pain. They don't want pleasure. They find their happiness in pain. They don't, they don't find their happiness in pleasure. I so, think like, the, the ultimate uh, goal is, is kind of happiness, but people seek it in different ways. And people, they get lost because they don't know what is true happiness. And the Buddha is teaching us what is true happiness, and this is the way to reach it. This is it, the true happiness is the peaceful mind, the natural mind. It's not the pleasure or the pain. There are two wrong ways of getting happiness. They're not the true ones. The true happiness is the peace, the knowing that doesn't get affected by all those things. And like sets the mind in the right way. Yeah. uh, yeah. yeah, and also I, I also feel that that pain and pleasure can often be the same thing. The pain I, can I, turn I, to pleasure. The pleasure can turn to pain. That. Yeah, and 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 then when when we take it a step up, then we get into joy and bliss, and you don't get joy and bliss just just like that. You need to work at it, whether in terms of meditation or concentrating on the breath or play, mm. because see see I feel I feel with pleasure you can cheat and get it. You can cheat and get get the uh, pleasure with drugs and food and etc. Joy and bliss, you just it, you don't get it unless you do one thing, which might be like Bruce Lee: is one does not add, but one removes. The art of cultivation is uh, is, is is simplicity. So, uh, so 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 it's about it's about subtracting, not adding. So that's the work we need to do, and it it's not easy. Oh, I, I think I think we can, can substitute be. the word of uh, work. Um, I, I think we can use the word deliberation instead of work. I think that's what Ryan means to be deliberate about it, to have clear insight, awareness and deliberately choose a more wholesome path rather than, yeah. you know, go ahead and get a. I don't know, yeah. or get yeah. some drugs or harm yourself. Right. Yeah. 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 But also, also, I think, see, it can be, you can say it can be easy, it can be playful. Yes. But how many hours did you take to put the work in to get here? Mm. Well, that's, see, that's, that's the that's... thing. We've, we've all been throwing so much gratitude at Damarato these past couple of weeks for specifically <laughs> this, this tweak to the practice that it is indeed about having nice wholesome moment after nice wholesome moment such that doesn't feel like work doesn't feel like effort in that what we've had the conversation about right effort right yeah and I, I know because because see there's there's two goals there's two ways to do things one way it can feel like self-love yes the other way can feel like self punishment yes Way of the warrior. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was reminded earlier of the Zen folks who were very good at we when we were back in um, that the goal is to have no goals, right? Mm-hmm. Desiring not to desire. So what the the Zen teachers would do is uh, the student would come and say the world is flat. And so the Zen teacher says, show me the edge. And so what the Zen teacher would do is uh, have the fool persist in his folly. Yeah. Right. And now not suggesting that it's necessarily the best way to go, because, you know, in Japanese culture, you have all these awful tales of suicide and that monks were were on the verge of suicide often in these zen tales with just that koan burning a hole in their pocket (laughs) right yeah and um so so quite different to how we do things because it sounds quite unpleasant the way they say it very often but i like that quality of having a fool persist in his folly to to show the student in the student's direct experience, yeah. that 
the whole thing breaks down in the end. <laughs> the whole thing breaks down. Of course, we can't desire not to desire. And so you just, it just becomes absurd. Yeah. It becomes absurd. And, and, and then you relax once you can see the cosmic joke. Yeah. Speak to me more about this wholesome enjoyment. So wholesome. It's very similar to what we were speaking about on the phone, the two of us, Ryan. Yeah. We were speaking, weren't we, about uh, the various uh, sitting techniques and how the technique of feeling good right now for the sake of right now is the practice. It's all we ever need. If we can sit and do nothing and be satisfied, that's the whole show. Game over. And so immediately <laughs> what most folks will say is, well, I can do it sometimes, but not <laughs> all the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, That's how about now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, the thing is... Uh, go ahead, Mohammed. Yeah, uh, the thing is doing nothing is, is, is tricky because it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's impossible to sit and do, really do nothing. The, like the mind does nothing, it's impossible. Sure. To, to prove that, for example, you're sitting and the bomb, I don't know, the bomb just explodes. You're going to freak out. There's yes, yes. Uh, a stream in your mind that's, that's still there, that's in the fight or flight mode. It's going on, that, that stream of your mind is going on. You, you're not paying attention to it, but it is created. So to really to say uh, the mind that does nothing is the goal. Like the ultimate goal is to have the mind that it stops, does nothing, just observes. When a bomb explodes, just sees it. Okay, bomb explode, exploded. It doesn't react to it. But uh, yeah, I mean, the practice is to be sensitive to this stuff, to be sensitive to these streams of the mind, like these like wires, electric wires or whatever, the mind that go outward, that go toward the world, and you can shut them down. You can shut, shut them down. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about these things. I don't have to worry about the future. I don't have to worry about this body. You just can't stay with the breath inside the body, like the body outside. No, like the body inside, how it feels. And you can enjoy it. You can enjoy the breath, being with the breath. You don't have to enjoy outside things. Just enjoy your body inside and the breath in it. You can enjoy it. It's free. Yeah. What you just said used to be it used to be so confusing to me. So when Danny first told me uh, that you can you can stop whatever is going on in your head, I was like, mind you, this is the time when I was doing my dissertation on cognition, right? I was like, how can you stop attention? How can you stop like any of the cognitive processes that are going on, you know? And then I realized it's not that that is all already going on and you can't possibly stop it. What we can stop is elaborating on on it. Like you said, if there's a bomb going um, goes off beside you. We can see it as see what it is rather than being terrified about our lives and panicking and, you know, doing all of that extra stuff that comes with the flight and fight. Instead, we can watch the bomb go off and take a rational, deliberate decision. Am I going to leave the house or not? Right. Instead of being um, swayed by our um, automatic processing that flight or fright, we can be more deliberate about it. Well, the, the common advice, isn't it, is to remain calm in a crisis. Yeah. We're just better off. Because mm -hmm. you can think properly. Yeah. I mean, more. it's better to say you are in charge of your thinking and your thinking is not in charge of you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's where, probably, what you do. It probably also relates to the fourth genre of perfect equanimity. A little bit. Uh, when you have like perfect equanimity, you can get what like be with whatever that it is, and uh, you don't get ticked around. And this is a good practice of equanimity. The, when you practice being okay with anything, for example, if you have pain in the body, you can just be try to be equanimous. Right? Try to be. Don't get affected by these things. Your mind is centered still. 
you can do mindfulness more like you, see, you can see more stuff when your mind is centered you can really see more clearly you can investigate more uh, better that's what i was saying yeah absolutely how wonderful yeah what's most trippy about all of this is that we are using our brain to analyze our brain yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a big yeah, it is crazy, and none of us have ever seen one. I have. You have? Did you do a dissection? What? Have you dissected a brain? A brain? Yeah. No, I saw a model of it, okay. and a real one, in a jar. <laughs> brain in a jar. Ryan, have you ever, have you ever seen a brain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen yeah. a brain. I've eaten yeah. one, too. You've eaten yeah. one? Uh, yeah, I mean, not, not a human brain. <laughs> <laughs> Hannibal over here. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. So the, yeah. Uh, so, so, no, but, but see, I feel that we might be saying that we're using a brain to understand the brain, but on some level, we are connecting to, to, to the source energy and we're getting insights from source as we are connecting with the hive mind, no? And I think that's what's happening over here, that there's a hive mind happening that's teaching us how to grow. A hive mind. Very similar to what uh, Hume called um, the archetypes, um, which is like a collective, it's similar to a collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. So it's like, say a kid, how does a kid know what a mother is? So when you say mother, it will have an image in its head already. Or, so those are the, lessons that a kid doesn't have to deliberately learn but it's almost programmed in its gene right mm -hmm. so in a way ryan is right when we talk about all of these things when when we engage in such wholesome stimulating conversation we may be hacking that part of the brain which already knows all of this mm. right mm. yeah this is one of the huge benefits of sangha is confirmation yeah we confirm for one another mm -hmm. that this is the way things are who was it that mentioned i think it might have been you parker the the danger of hanging out with friends at the bar <laughs> 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 yeah. well look you know hanging out at the bar is fun and i'm sure we've all got some wonderful friends who like to hang out at the bar but uh they're not going to confirm for us the benefit of well maybe they will but perhaps less often perhaps. in a different way maybe in a different way yeah perhaps you won't understand their slurred speech perhaps not <laughs> perhaps not and it's you know we i think if if we're at the bar certainly on a friday or a saturday night and things are kicking off we're very much in that realm of let me do something that makes me feel good now. Immediate gratification, mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm going to ignore the consequences, even though I know they go together. Yeah. Because that's the best shot I've got. That's why the image of, you know, having a drink after a hard day's work is so appropriate because people are tired and they have so less resource to be deliberate and generate that joy and happiness through wholesome means so they it's very easy and tempting for people at that time when they're really exhausted and tired to seek immediate gratification because it's less work it's less deliberation you can switch off and sip on your wine and that's going to give you some sort of happiness yeah i was listening to a damarado talk last night i think it was posted today um about um philosophy and uh the dhamma and how they differ um mm -hmm. and um damrado mentioned um wow. that part of the rise of philosophy and even western buddhism um is kind of the realization of um that um maybe climbing the mountain of the mind isn't as easy as one um, might have first thought or it's not a super easy task like um, it's a task to be done so instead of 
going for that experiential, um, we go for the didactic, the conceptualized thinking um, yeah. of modern day philosophy and Buddhism, where we're all in concepts rather than um, in the present moment, um, just enjoying how things are. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, yeah, you said it accurately. Um, philo uh, phil philosophy can be uh, correlated to conceptualizing, a lot of conceptualizing rather than integrating it into our being. And Where old philosophy and ancient philosophy and Buddhism, they were both about the experiential, um, mm -hmm. although it's changed over time. That's interesting because, you know, um, so we often think the, these teachings are so nice and they are effective. So why do the monks have to go through this, these crazy rituals? Right, all those cool things, uh, the strictness about posture and all of that. It is true that our body and mind are connected and those kind of behavioral measures can and do influence our mm, uh, mental state. But at the same time, we have to be mindful that those were particularly designed for a particular context, a particular group of people. And Obviously, the time difference is there, so we tend. We don't need to think of them as rules. We can think of them as like things to be played with. Good advice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Like what? Um, like uh, Debbie was talking about posture. We can. Um, oh. We don't have to be like. Um, I need to be sitting in crisscross cross posture, um, or it's bad, or I need to feel bad. We can rather think um, that. Um, this is some good advice someone gave from a certain time, um, and we can examine it in this time now and inspect the body and why might this posture be better than sitting down or lying on our backs or our chests or something like that. Um, and that it, maybe it gives more breathing ability or something, or yeah. more stability. Right, right. And let's find out for ourselves. Let's find out, yeah, yeah. exactly. So the attitude of experimentation comes in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, guys, this seems like a good time to wrap. We're both tired. This is really great. Oh, yeah. thanks, Danny. Thank you. So great. Really great yes. to be with you all. And uh, thank you. Do, do, do pop up throughout the week as well if I don't hear from any of you then I'll call again next week good see you thank okay. you thank you bye thank you as always bye bye bye, bye. bye everyone bye. goodbye see you next time bye. yeah